Hey everybody, I have another deck tech for you guys. Uh, it is a black-green deck based off of uh, Heartless Summoning. One of my favorite cards, I just like to play around with a couple of my favorite cards and make a deck off of them. Heartless Summoning is 1-1 one, one black. Creature spells you cast cost 2 less to cast, and creatures you control also get minus 1-1. One, minus one. So it's a pretty good trade-off, especially if you put the right creatures in your deck. So we'll get into the non-creature spells in a sec, but I just wanted to go over the creatures. For this deck, I have three Solemns. Uh, obviously, with Heartless Summoning, it becomes two, and you do get a basic land out of it, so it's a good ramp, and you get to draw a card when these die. So they're good uh, chump blockers uh, when they come out, and you get pretty good card advantage with these. I have four Glisa the Traders. There's a decent amount of artifacts in this deck, and I do like the recursion, and I will be showing you the combos later on in this video. So check this out. She's also really good, even with Heartless Summoning out because of the first strike and the death touch. She's an awesome blocker. She can pretty much block anything that does not have first strike itself. And uh, she will definitely defend you in the long run. I have three Harvester of Souls. The reason why I put these in this deck uh, is because you will probably have a lot of creatures dying, uh, including your opponents and yours. So definitely card advantage. You can get this out on turn 4 as well, especially with the uh, Heartless Summoning out. So it is a 4-4 Death Touch. Still pretty good body, and uh, the ability is really good. I have 3 Acidic Slimes. Acidic Slimes are just good utility cards. Um, if you get them out pretty early with Heartless Summoning, you can uh, destroy one of the lands and mess up with their tempo. But late game, uh, they Oblivion Ring, some of your stuff like Lisa or any of your creatures. Acidic Slime will also take care of the enchantments as well. So it is an overall all good card, utility card. I have three of these. With Heartless Summon, you can bring out turn three. Very, very dangerous. I have two Wormcle Engines. Wormcle Engines are just basically just one of the best cards printed, in my opinion. Uh, really considered the sixth Titan. Uh, the Death Touch is nice. Uh, it's really, I put this in here for the Life Link. Um, six life uh, point swing is pretty good, especially you know when you're taking hits early in the game. This will bring you back into the game with the Life Link. So, and the tokens still stay alive with Heartless Summoning out, so it's really good. Heartless Summoning uh, with this, turn four, World Cup Engine, pretty scary. I have two Spell Skites. Spell Skites are here, uh, mainly for protection for many of your creatures. Uh, also, your Heartless Summoning can be protected if somebody tries to naturalize it, disenchant it. Those type of cards. Uh, spell Sky for two, two, uh, two life, because there's pretty much no blue in this uh, deck, uh, will protect your cards for you. So I put two of, the, two of these. And with Heartless Summoning, they're free. Fearless Mirror, uh, really meant for its ability uh, to deal two damage for target creature or player when it goes to the graveyard. When Heartless Summoning is out, uh, you can obviously see you, play, you can play these for free basically, and they die, uh, and you get two damage. So it's basically a free shock. Uh, if they have a lot of creatures out and you have Glisa out at the same time, uh, these basically kill off their entire board. So it's really nice. I also have four Viridian emissaries. These are good cards. I like these. Uh, the two one, if you get them out pretty early, they can be pretty aggressive. Uh, and generally, what I've seen in my uh, group of players is that people don't want to block it too early in the game because they don't want you to give, uh, they don't want to give you the land advantage. So it really is a lose-lose situation for both of them. They either take the damage or they give you lands, and which allows you to uh, play other spells really quickly. And then, just for fun, I put a mold, mold graph monstrosity. Um, with the Heartless Summoning out, you can bring out around turn 5, turn 4, based on your ramp. Uh, it is a 7-7 Trample uh, with Heartless Summoning out. And when it dies, you know, you can get some of your creatures out, so it helps you back. Um, you can replace this with pretty much any green fatty that you like. Uh, it doesn't have to be Molgruff Monstrosity, but I just put these in uh, for fun. And normally, people don't play these type of cards anyway. For our non-creature spells, we have 4x Heartless Summonings. These are basically the spine of the deck. Um, you definitely want 4x. You can test out with 3x if you want, but generally 4x seems to be the best because you do want this out, and a lot of your creatures really come out earlier with these. The only bad thing about having 4x is that if you draw more than one, 
uh, you can, you know, they're basically dead draws. Unless you want to cast two Heartless Summonings and bring out Wormcoil Engine for two mana, which is pretty cool. But uh, overall, one out on the battlefield is good most of the time. I have two Green Sun Zeniths. Uh, these can search for pretty much any of your green creatures in this deck. Glisa is always good. I just like to have her out uh, for her first strike and death touch ability. Uh, if you, you know, if any of your stuff has been Oblivion Rings or anything like that, you can definitely Green Sun Zenith for a Acidic Slime. Uh, you always have to remember, however, that Green Sun Zenith, even with Heartless Summoning, you still have to ca uh, pay for the entire casting cost. So make sure you remember that rule when you actually use these. I have two Unearths. Since I play uh, more Legacy, uh, not so much Modern, this is an awesome card for this deck because, you know, Glisa comes out immediately onto the battlefield, your spell skies come out, there's a lot of creatures that are three or less, and so these actually help out quite a bit when your creatures are dead. Um, if you are playing this in a Modern deck, you can definitely take these out, uh, or you can replace them with, you know, any uh, regrowth or type ability or anything like that, so these are just fun because I play Legacy with my friends. For fun, I have one Gutter Grime. Again, uh, your creatures in this deck, as well as your opponent's creatures that they're playing a lot, will die often. And Gutter Grime, I have one X of. It actually grows pretty big, and you will have a decent amount of oozes, uh, ooze tokens. So it's a fun card. It's a good uh, game ender as well, especially when you're playing multiplayer games. So it's fun. I have one Mind Slaver. Mind Slaver is probably my favorite card of all time. Uh, especially with Gleesa out, and you kill off their creatures, you will get my Slayer back, take control of the turn over and over and over again, and you will probably make a lot of enemies this way. Then I have four Executioner's Capsules. These are basically Doom Blades on an artifact. Uh, you can kill pretty much uh, most of their creatures as long as they're not playing black. If you have Gleesa out and you kill them off, this will return back to your hand, and as long as you have the mana for it, you can continue to cast these, use them, and then bring them back to your hand, cast them again, and repeat. And you can pretty much clear off their board once you, if you have a, the mana for it, which you probably will anyway because of all the decent ramp you have in this deck. For the lands, this is more of a budget deck, but I have four Golgari Guild Gates, and the rest are forests and swamps. So depending on your budget, you can add pretty much any swamps, forests, shock lands, fetch lands you like. Uh, they will definitely help your cause. But if not, uh, I find that the Golgari Guild Gates and the basic lands are still very good enough. And now I just wanted to show off the combo piece in this deck. If you have these cards out, uh, you can definitely see the combo here. Heartless Summoning allows Perilous Mirror to be free, basically and you can shock any of the creatures or the players. If you kill off one of their creatures, um, you basically get Perilous Mirror back because of Gleesa the Traitor, and then you can continue to play Perilous Mirror for free, continue to shock any of their creatures with you know toughness two or less, and basically keep on getting them back because of Gleesa. Also, if you happen to have Harvester Souls out at the same time, you will definitely be drawing cards for all the creatures that are dying, uh, any non-token creatures, and also your Perilous Mirror will contribute to the Gutter Grind cost as well. So again, there's a lot of cool combinations with this deck. Uh, you know, if you try it out, you will definitely find some out. Heartless Summoning is a really cool card. Um, if you put the, if you find the right creatures with it, uh, you can do a lot of cool stuff. A lot of the big ones that you normally wouldn't play uh, actually come out sooner, and so it allows a, a lot of new gameplay uh, strategies and ideas. So I hope you guys enjoyed this deck. Please comment below and uh, let me know if you have any requests. Thanks for watching.